Hi, this is Libby. And this is Roberta. And you're on Art Blog Radio. We're speaking today with Jordan Griska, a Philadelphia artist with a big sculptural installation that will help inaugurate the new Lenfest Plaza now under construction outside the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. We're visiting the artist's studio, a huge space in West Philly that was a trolley barn once, way before SEPTA. The space is now a shared workspace for a small group of artists who work really, really big. Griska's Lenfest project involves an airplane, which the artist bought on eBay. Griska graduated from PAFA in 2009 and has previously used big industrial machinery in his works, most notably a real gasoline pump. So Jordan, tell us about the airplane. What kind of plane is it? And did you really buy it on eBay? Uh, yes, I really bought it on eBay. Uh, eBay was actually the first place I looked, and then the last place I found the airplane. So. After my uh, first searches on eBay, I, you know, I was looking for something that was not an active airplane, didn't have its engines, basically a shell of a plane that I could manipulate. Um, after looking on every airplane forum, um, trying to contact the airplane graveyards in Arizona, no, I didn't have any luck in any of those places. Um, I was getting a little nervous, you know, this project's coming up, I really have to find an airplane. And I decided, you know, my old faithful eBay, I'll check there again. And lo and behold, I found a uh, Grumman S2E tracker. It's a uh, Cold War airplane. Mine was built in 1962. It was a Navy submarine tracker, torpedo bomber. It carried depth charges. After it was decommissioned from the Navy, it went to the forestry department in California and was uh, part of a forest fire fighting team and uh, it would carry huge payloads of uh, fire suppressant and drop them on forest fires. And who'd you buy it from? Uh, I, so after it, it lived in California for a little while, someone in Alabama purchased it. Um, he, he bought it, I think, with the intention of removing all the useful parts from it and selling it, and then I bought it from him, um, and his intention was for scrapping it. It was just a private individual. And how'd you get it up here? The airplane was uh, disassembled and put on two four to three foot uh, flatbed trucks and then trailered up here. And when does it have to get into Lenfest Plaza? What's your deadline? Uh, my deadline is uh, September 15th is when I'm going to, well, let me start that over. Part of the process for me is uh, assembling the entire sculpture as a finished piece in here. And then it will be disassembled um, and then leave my studio on September 15th to go down in the plaza and I'll inst install the piece that week. And how's it going to be different from an airplane, just an airplane? What makes it a sculpture? Uh, well, I'm changing its purpose uh, from something that flies and, you know, moves to something that's still. And I'm incorporating an active uh, greenhouse that will grow useful herbs and vegetables inside can you describe what the plane will look like since people won't be able to envision it? How's it going to look in the plaza? It's slightly inverted uh, with the tail section going uh, upward in space. Um, it basically spreads from a uh, focal point in the ground upward into the space. So almost an upside down tri tripod shape with one, the wing, one wing is being completely bent in a direction that it wasn't when it was used as an airplane. And how high up is that one wing, the tallest wing, going to be The tallest in the part of the sculpture, I think, is around 28 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the content of some of your pieces. Um, in terms of materials, you seem to like to use either found materials. Do you have an ecological thought in what you're making from found materials? Is that one of the inspirations for using what you're using? Sure. That was something that I became conscious of in art school was uh, how wasteful um, some art processes can be. You know, being a student, you're trying to find ways to execute your ideas as well as, you know, developing the idea that you don't want to create more waste. O oftentimes you can get, you know, higher quality materials from the dumpster or the scrapyard than you could, you know, buying it from Home Depot or a, a local distributor. Part of our studio's outlook as a whole is like a very green, uh, recycled culture. For the people listening, you can't see the inside of the studio, but uh, some of our structures we build in here are completely out of recycled materials. 
We've been uh, utilizing a recycling center in the northeast and we're pulling wood out of there that's all used. Um, we pull every nail out of it and then, you know, bring it over here, which allows us to get wood for free. Um, but at the same time, we're not, you know, cutting down new trees for buildings or projects that we're executing out here. Do you come from an arty household? No, I don't. Uh, I come from a medical household. Um, my mom's a radiologist, my dad's a general internist, and my brother is a uh, surgical resident at Penn right now. So how'd you come to art? That's a good question. I, I started it out my, uh, my studies um, with a uh, presidential art scholarship at uh, the George Washington University. So I, I had been interested in art um, but I wasn't sure that was exactly the path either. I was actually started in a pre-med path as well. And then uh, after a year down there, I decided uh, I wanted to take that focus a little more seriously and I transferred to uh, PAFA. Did you start out as a painter? Uh, everyone seems to start out as a painter. No, when they I, I started out as a skateboard ramp builder and uh, you know digging forts in the backyard also, you know. So are you a skateboarder too? Uh, not or so much these builder. days. Yeah, oh, I mean, it was for myself to s skate on. Um, I mean, I'm talking when I was like 11, I was building skateboard ramps at my house. So your your dad had a tool? No. My, my grandfather was a uh, was a pattern maker, which is the person that does the woodworking uh, patterns that, that were stamped into sand to have cast iron cast into those patterns. I got uh, a probably from an early age interest in building from him. He died when I was uh, 10 though, so I got like a, a little jump start from him and uh, a whole lot of nice tools. My dad, you know, he's a busy, busy professional, so kind of one of the things that I, I learned to do was self-educate about fabrication. You know, all the all the sculpture that I make is very fabrication heavy and process heavy, and that's all done in house. So if I need to, you know, learn how to vacuum mold uh, reinforced plastics, then I'm going to look it up online and build my own vacuum pump and mold system, and then do it. So how about the gas pump that you have made? That is this accordion pleated gas pump that seems like it's a shrunk version of its grand self. Can you talk about that a little bit? What inspired you to make that and where did you get that object? Something I'm uh, becoming very good at is finding obscure things on the internet. The internet is a very powerful tool. That piece came, uh, it's a 1960s gas pump, came from a town near Harrisburg. I found it on the internet on a forum. I was looking for a gas pump to uh, articulate the structure of that guy bought it from a uh, gas company that was closing. Uh, often when a company closes, they have an auction, and gas pumps are a collectible item. So this guy purchased a bunch of them. He was going to use it, give it to his son for a gift and didn't do anything to it, and then I picked it up from him. I was looking I'm, to, I'm trying to picture what the son was going to do with this gift. Uh, I think that he was actually going to put a TV inside of it. So there's like a large gla glass-framed window and uh, I think this has a novelty for his bedroom. They're going to install a TV and a, and a gas pump. But it smells of gas. I mean, I've seen this object in sure. a couple of shows, and it, it really smells sure. like a gas pump. Well, something that uh, I was interested in, actually, is that smell. Uh, it was something I kept on purpose. Did you know beforehand, though, that it would have the smell, or did yeah, you discover I mean, I, it when it arrived? Part of the process of... Uh, creating the sculpture was return, um, taking out the internal pump mechanism. But when you bought it, you knew it would have gasoline mm -hmm. in it? I mean, I wasn't 100%. I didn't know what the guy had done to it, but there was a pretty good chance that there was still gasoline in it. So, but the, the idea of this old technology, the old airplane and the old gas pump, it's, there's sort of a, a forlorn aspect to that, and we're curious about what you're thinking about the past vis-a-vis -vis now and the future. Do you have thoughts that are going into your sculpture about, you know, our bad past and our glorious future or anything like that? <laughs> I don't know. Something that I really try to achieve with my artwork is uh, a balance of content, aesthetic, 
I, I like the history that's involved with these objects. Uh, there's a lot of connotations as you are interpreting through a gas pump or an airplane that are on a personal level. That's reflective of your own view rather than my own view, which I like because uh, that allows you know the person to connect with it on a level and it becomes relevant to them. I, I uh, am choosing objects that are significant to our current uh, geopolitical climate, but a child can come up to these pieces and enjoy them for their own interests as well. You're now involved in a space that um, that has a lot of artists in it, and it's sort of like a little community. And um, you're also a member of SIVA. Mm -hmm. Center uh, for Emerging Visual Artists. Yeah. Exactly. And um, and I think you're also involved in another artist community. I'm not sure that that's right, but can you talk about that? Community or community? Yeah, community is huge. Uh, without community, you know, I am nothing. No one can accomplish much on their own. My studio atmosphere is really important. So I'm not in a studio by myself working on something alone. Even if uh, one of the other studio members in here, they're working on their own project, but just the energy of having another person out there is important. Uh, when we have to load or unload, everyone comes together. One of the things that uh, allowed me to succeed in my own work is uh, my studio acts as a co-op where people bring materials and tools together. So I don't have to buy every tool that I need to use by myself. It also creates a network of uh, artist dialogue. Um, we're all artists, we're all in a similar boat. If any of us is having a problem, we can kind of be like, hey, what did you do when this happened? Or, um, you know, what do you think about this situation? So the community has been a really important factor uh, for my own artwork. Uh, CIFA is a really, really cool organization. They, uh, they work to help. Our Should we pause for sure. a sec? Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> the guy who owns the building has a hardwood flooring business. And uh, I think I, I know his saw sound, so. One of the things that I noticed way, way, way in the back of the building is that there's a car in there. And it looks so small. It's yeah. a real car. Mm -hmm. The scale in here is very deceptive. Uh, if you don't have anything for a real reference like a car, your eyes kind of like fool you. You can see all the walls and the ceiling. It doesn't look as big, but... Uh, there's those moments where, you know, if you go up to the ceiling joist and you realize it's 18 inches tall instead of, you know, 8 or 10 inches tall, you, you get a, a scope for how big this place really is. How's the roof? Does it leak? Yeah, we get leaks. We'll go up there and fix them. It's a kind of like, you know, DIY space where if we need something, we create it. If there's a problem, we fix it. Anyone a roofer? No, but we just look it up on the internet. <laughs> We've been speaking with Jordan Briscoe. Thank you so much, Jordan, for Thanks having for us. Thanks for coming out to the studio. Art Blog Radio is brought to you by theartblog.org. Thanks to our sponsors, including the Knight Foundation. Also, we want to thank Peter Crimmins, who makes us sound good. He's our editor. And thanks to Eric Biondo for his music. You can download these podcasts at theartblog.org slash radio.